All right, so this next tip is all about the express keys. And the express keys are the physical buttons that you have in your Wacom devices. In my case, I use a Cintiq Pro 27 inch. So if I go ahead and show you on the left hand side, uh, at the back of the Cintiq, I have my, my left hand, and this is where I can access all these express keys. So these are the literally the, the buttons, the physical buttons that I can assign things to. Now, if you use something else that is not a Cintiq, something like the Intuos Pro, like this device right here, you can access this from here. So these are the, the physical buttons that you have in your tablet. And like I said, you can assign absolutely anything that you want. Now, obviously you can use these buttons to assign the radio menus that we've been creating in the series and that sort of thing. But um, the real value of these buttons is that you can replace essential things that you can do with the keyboard. So in other words, with the Cintiq that I'm using right now, I don't need to use a keyboard at all. I just need to use these four keys. And if I need more, I have the other side as well. So let's go ahead and jump into um, Substance Painter in this case, which is a software that I use for um, for painting and texturing. And if you look at what I'm doing here on the, on the back of the Cintiq, I have assigned this button right here to be my Alt key. This is my Shift key and this is my Control, right? And that is basically the modifiers that I would use in a software like this. And I also assign a, an undo on this one, right? So I just grab my Cintiq like this and I don't have any keyboard available to me, but I can use the Alt key to navigate. And this, this is what I'm doing. I'm just pressing the Alt key to navigate. And let's say that I want to paint some damage in here. I can just go ahead and paint and say, you know what? This is a little bit too much. It's too big uh, and, you know, it is not what I want. So I'm going to use the undo to undo that. And then I can change the size of my brush by pressing the control. And this is specific, obviously, to the software, but I can press control and right click to change the size. So I can just do this type of things. And in this software, it allows me to also change the, the lighting so I can check how all these details are working in the light. So I can press the shift key and right click and I can move the light like so. So now that I show you kind of like the, the general idea of these express keys, I can move really, really quickly and start moving the light and it just becomes like second nature. I can change the size really quickly and it becomes, like I said, second nature. So you just do these details and it makes uh, the entire workflow really, really fast uh, because I have the, the main keys or the main uh, modifiers that I would use in, a, you know, in a, something like this. Maybe I made a mistake here, so let's undo that, um, you know, that I would use in a keyboard, but they're assigned to the, to the Wacom Express keys. So again, this is a fantastic way to improve the, the workflow. And as you can see, I'm not relying on anything on the keyboard to actually create what I need. Now, one thing I should mention though, is that I have mapped the right click to one of the buttons in my pen. So certain things that work in combination with the right click or the middle mouse button, things like that with the modifiers, um, I have that also covered because I have the, the different type of clicks from the pen and I also have these uh, express keys. So for example, the rotation of the light in the software is pressing the shift key and right clicking. So I'm pressing one of the buttons in my, in my pen and I'm pressing shift to do this. The same thing goes for control. So I can press control in the express keys and I can right click with the mouse and that's how I can change the size of my brush, right? So very, very handy stuff. All right, so now that I have covered kind of like the idea of the express keys, let's go ahead and map them to your own device. So I'm gonna switch to a full screen here and I'm gonna bring in the Wacom device. All right, so in the Wacom device, you see I have already selected the express keys. You can do that. Uh, again, if you have multiple ones, let me actually, uh, I'm going to turn on my Intuos Pro, and there we go. So it recognizes it straight away. So this is my Intuos Pro. So I can select the Intuos Pro, and I can just go ahead and click on Express Settings, and I can modify all of these ones. I'm going to concentrate on the Cintiq because that's the one that I'm using, uh, so it makes more sense. But I just wanted to show you that you can totally do it with the Intuos Pro. So let's click on Cintiq. Let's click on Express Keys and you see them in here. But I can select absolutely any other software that I want and I can assign different things. So I have a different set of tools in here for Krita, for example. So if I click on Krita, so you see, instead of using the Alt key in here, I'm using the Control key. So um, here at the top uh, for Krita, this is Control instead of Alt. For Substance, this is Alt. Uh, for Photoshop, it's also Alt. So this is something that I wanted to cover because you know you can totally assign this based on the software, but what I would advise in terms of productivity would be to assign the, the action or the or the purpose of the of the shortcut, let's say, uh, based on the software rather than um, th rather than tweak this one to to fit within the within the button. So let me just give you an example because I know that is a little bit confusing. So when I go to Photoshop, for example, right, and let's go ahead and I just paint something like this with a couple of different colors. In Photoshop, the way that I access the eyedropper in order to select a specific color is with Alt, right? So I assign this to this key, right? So if I press Alt, I can access my eyedropper and I can assign or I can select any of these colors. So it makes sense to me. 
right? Now, if I switch to something else like Krita, again, the Wacom is intelligent enough to recognize this is a new software and every single button right here will be mapped to this specific software. So let's go ahead and, you know, paint something like this, like so. And if I want to do the same action, and this is what I mean, in Photoshop, I'm using the Alt modifier to access the eyedropper, whereas in Krita, you use the Control key. So instead of me thinking, okay, when I switch to Krita, uh, what's the what's the button that I need to touch in here? Where's the Alt or where's the Control? Um, rather than that, I'm just thinking about the functionality. So I can use exactly the same button, the same Express key to select the color. As you can see, I'm just like eyedropping the color, and I can switch back to Photoshop again, and I can use the same tool to access the same functionality, right? So the button itself or the express key is the same, is providing me the same functionality, in this case, uh, the color picker. But depending on the application that I'm in, I'm switching between Photoshop and Krita, I'm actually switching the, um, the modifier. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, this is just like a, a productivity tip, not necessarily what I'm gonna show you in terms of mapping, is more about thinking about what to map to these express keys rather than just randomly attach the shift key, the alt and the control and, and that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and assign some shortcuts to these express keys. So it's going to be the same thing regardless of which side you use. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on this top one and it brings in the same panels. And like I said, you can go ahead and select, um, you know, some of the radial menus that we made um, and assign it to this express key. So when you click it, it will bring it in. Uh, in my case, I just want to add, let's go to the keyboard and I'm going to go to the keyboard shortcuts and I'm just going to press the tab on my keyboard and I'm going to call this one full screen just so I know what it is. So now this has the tab assigned to it. So I can go back into Painter and I can press that button right there. And you see um, what it's doing is going from the, the entire uh, user interface to full screen mode. Now, another thing that I use constantly in Substance 3 Painter is I cycle through the different maps that, that I have. So that is here from the dropdown. I can just go ahead and click on base color to see what I'm doing for the albedo or go to the metallic, then go to the roughness, that sort of thing. So there is a shortcut for that, and there is a shortcut to go back to the material. So the shortcut for the material is the letter M, and the shortcut to cycle through this is the letter C. So let's go back to the Wacom Center, and I'm gonna click on this one, and I'm gonna type keyboard shortcut, I'm gonna press the letter M, and I'm gonna say material, click OK, or apply. And then this second one at the bottom, I'm gonna do the same thing, keyboard shortcut, and this is going to be the letter C, and I'm going to call it channel, like so. And remember, the idea is to minimize the need for a keyboard so that you can concentrate on creating stuff, uh, and that's the beauty of, of this whole thing. So let's go back into Painter. So now I could be, you know, moving things around, um, you know, changing the, the screen or whatever, changing the, the lighting, adding more details if I wanted to. Uh, I can go into full screen, but then I can also press the other two buttons that I just added. So I can do C and I can, you know, cycle through the entire, let's actually go into full screen mode. You see how easy that is. And I can cycle through all of the different channels. And if I want to go back to material, I just press M and that's it. I can just continue my, my work and I still have access to the other shortcuts, obviously like control, right click to change all of that, um, shift and right click to change the, uh, the environment or, or the lighting. So, there you have it. Very, very simple stuff. But once you get familiar with these tools uh, and you spend the time setting up your express keys, your workflow can take, uh, it, it just go to another level. It's, it's one of the things that I truly believe that if you spend the time setting it up, even if it takes you a day or a week to set these things up in a conscious way so that you actually use them, is going to improve the way that you work and how fast you work. So that's it for this tip and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.